So you underbid a job, and you're not only not even making any money, you're losing money. You're paying money to do this job. <laughs> uh, you left a comment on my last video. Uh, I just, I'm not going to say your name because out of respect, but I really uh, care. You're in the same exact position, and it's very painful, and you're doing work for a guy who happens to be an attorney your customer so you're really nervous and you don't want to walk off the job yet you're, you you feel like folding your whole business you you can't even do this right and the problem is the opportunity cost of other jobs you could be on making money you're probably losing like two grand right now and it's gonna take you a minute to even recover you're gonna to have to work seven days a week and run your ass off to recover from this um, if I can, you put the comment, so if I can give my two cents, you know, not that I'm like some wise guru, but I've been through this, so, and anybody here who's watching, and anybody who's been through this, please let us know in the comments below, so we can all learn from it, including me. Okay. As soon as you start getting really wise, if you step on a crack, you'll break your mother's back. Don't step on a crack or you'll break your mother's back. That shit is true. It's like you're in a batting cage and it's high speed and they're all on, all the machines are on and they're all shooting baseballs at you at the same time. And you don't even have a baseball bat. Like you're sitting there with a little cheap ass wiffle bat. And that's life, that's the world coming at you, and what you're equipped with is insufficient. So, in life, we really are thrown in the middle of the ocean with no life preserver, no boat, no nothing, and we have to figure that out on the fly. Um, it, it, it makes me angry and, and resentful. Uh, not too much, but it does how, you know, our parents sit us down in front of a television and don't prepare us for life, how we're not taught about this shit in school, and how we just have to figure it out on the fly, okay? In this world, you will get taken advantage of, and you will get eaten alive. Either the customer doesn't know, or they don't give a shit. And as soon as you start to get wise, and you start, you know, whoa, 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 whoa. Bow, 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 bow. You start dissecting shit. You start becoming like a sergeant of your own business and, and, and seeing everything and reading between the lines. Whoa, 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 Mr. Customer. We were walking around your property during the quote and you're pointing it, telling all the things you want done. Stop. Back up. This thing right here. We need to talk about this and get this thing clarified before we move on to the next thing. Stop. <laughs> this thing. This is going to be an issue. That little tiny thing. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> so, you know, shout out to Hub, Hub Lawn Care. <laughs> it's funny. Hindsight's twenty twenty. When you go through this shit, let us know in the comments below if you've been through it now. You ever seen that movie Time with Justin Timberlake? Like Time is like it's like you run out of time, you're dead, and the people that are in poverty are running, and they're always running out of time. It's like oxygen. Money is oxygen. It's like you have to run on a treadmill that's hooked up to a little tiny oxygen thing. 
you're breathing through a pixie straw, right? And you're running full speed on this treadmill, yet you have to go and build this business. You have to build this thing that create, you have to build an oxygen generating machine, right? And it's the size of a factory and it's complex. And it's like, but every time you go to build it, you're holding your breath and you have to keep running. Like, it's, 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 an, it's insanity, right? And then let alone all the, the the red tape of running an actual legitimate business. And, that, and then now you have to deal with this slew of all these customers and clients that want you to do work, hopefully if you know how to get the work, that are all trying to, you know, I'm not saying they're trying to chew you down for the lowest price, but let me give you an example. I got home from work last night. It's 3 in the morning, by the way. I'm up at 3 a.m., going through the numbers like I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm just jogging the numbers in my head it's it's insanity okay because I'm uh, I'm pissed off we, we got to do eight hundred and ten dollars a day every single day in the business to make everything work and yesterday we only did six hundred and seventy dollars and I only made like a hundred and twenty dollars profit and now tomorrow or this morning I'll be, we'll be doing fifteen hundred and then I'll make up for it right so it's just it is what it is but um and what, what was I saying? Um, all the information did. Oh, yeah. So I sit down on the couch when I got home from work, tired. And I played all my voicemails on speakerphone. A customer calls, leaves a voicemail. Yes, I would like a quote. To, just by the very tone of that customer's voice. I mean, I would like to, a quote for some landscaping to get to get all my trees trimmed and all the landscape maintenance done, and I want to get you guys out here as soon as possible. Just by the very tone of that customer's voice, delete, next. Yeah, so I would like to know a quote for last. Delete, next. Yes, yeah, so all. I want you to come out and uh, do my landscaping. I'm looking for the lowest possible price. Delete. I literally went through and just delete. <laughs> It's this is twisted, bro. I went through and deleted all the. <laughs> I deleted all the fucking voicemails. You know I'm laughing, cause that's insane. One customer, I'm like, dude, this is this is this is a money job right here. This is good. I can I can hear by the way the customer is leaving a very detailed message on my phone, saying that they want a lot of work done. And then I could just sense, I could just feel it. I could feel it. Delete. You know why? Now you can leave it. You could, you guys are, some of you, some guys in the comments are right now, you're an idiot. I answer all my, I show up in all quotes. Well, where are you at in your business? I don't know. It totally, we're all in different spots, right? So, because how lesson is repeated until lesson is learned. I know for a fact I would bet money on it. I know exactly what's going to happen when I show up. You can hear the frequency. You can feel the frequency. The gut doesn't lie. You can feel it. When you walk into a property with a customer, you say, is this a, is this a, a lesson that I'm willing to learn? How bad do I need money? Because the monetary component of money is the number one thing that I think breaks your back in this business is because you're doing things you don't want to do in the first place because you need money to pay your bills to survive. You need that oxygen, right? I, dude, I will shovel shit. I'll clean toilets. I'll do anything to feed my family. It doesn't matter what it is, right? It really comes down to the amount of options you have in front of you. It takes 10,000 hours of experience to become an expert in any field. Trouble is, most people become experts in fields that don't pay well. Do you know anybody who has spent a lot of time becoming an expert in a field that they had no idea that it paid really, really well? And now they're making a lot of money, and they're like, well, it's because I'm an expert. <laughs> right? But, you know, that's a partial truth. Because you can look at us as, like, landscapers or window cleaners and be like, you know, some dude who, you know, nothing against fast food jobs, but somebody works in a fast food job for years and it's very hard work and they become like an expert at it, right? Well, they can't just go open up their own fast food restaurant. 
without like a lot of money and proper licensing or whatever, right? And then they can look at you and be like, how do you have your own landscaping business and you're doing so well? Well, it's because I'm an expert. You're like, bullshit. You had no idea that you could start this business with such low overhead and that you can get all these clients and start making, you know, all this money. What I'm saying is that... You get what I'm saying? Okay, so the amount of money that you make is in direct proportion to the amount of other people who are lined up willing to do the same exact thing, right? It's a, it's it's basic economics, okay? Dishwashing. How many applications are in at restaurants for dishwashers? Like thousands, okay? So they can barter the price down really, really low. It's not rare. It's not a rare skill. If you have developed a rare skill and you've become an expert at it, that not a lot of people can do and it's in high demand you can charge a lot more money for that why do you think a fucking brain surgeon makes a lot of money he's a very high paid employee or physician why do you think you know certain people make really good money now here's the thing how long are you or I willing to stick our head in the sand and keep doing shit that anybody can do for low pay the customer is like Trim my shrubs and get this shit off my property, right? It's not a high-paying thing. It's because it's your... That's what you're doing. Now, granted, if you were designing like a $50,000 landscape install with beautiful architecture... Oh, dude, I gotta make a video about this. I, I there's, there's something that... Some epiphanies that have been coming to me lately. Um, okay. So there's millions of people out there, customers, and they're all in different, like when somebody's getting ready to buy a BMW, right? They've been thinking about it a long time, they've had other cars, maybe they had another BMW, and they're ready to pull the trigger on that $80,000 BMW, okay? That's where that customer is at. That's just where they're at. That's where they're at in their life, that's where they're at in their finances, that's where they're at. When they walk into that BMW dealership, and they're hot and they're ready to buy, they pull the trigger and they buy it, Right? good for the guy who works at the BMW dealership that day who's been dealing with those leads you know in that time if you're selling engagement rings and no um, I'm, I'm talking about economics here what I'm talking about is is if you're selling shit that only cost a hundred dollars or it's only worth 20 bucks an hour you're going to attract all the people who are willing and ready to buy that shit for 20 bucks an hour. Right? You get what I'm saying? If you're selling Lamborghinis in Beverly Hills, California, I'm just guessing, and the economy's good, you're probably going to sell some Lamborghinis, right? Because you're in the place where people buy Lamborghinis. Oh, I was there and I saw a bunch of Lamborghinis, right? Let me know in the comments. Um, you're probably going to sell some. Now, if you're trying to sell Lamborghinis in the heart of, like, uh, I don't know, the ghetto of Detroit, you're probably not going to sell any Lamborghinis, right? What are, what are you selling? How valuable is it to the marketplace? What is your messaging? What, what are you doing? What is your life's purpose? What is your life's calling? Okay? If you're upset because you underbid a landscape maintenance job and you're out there, you know, or whatever the job is, and you're out there losing money to do it, and the customer doesn't know, or they don't care, or they know, and they're like, hell yeah, I got this idiot out here doing this shit for peanuts, right? All I'm saying is, the big mansion that you show, when you're showing up at half a million dollar houses and you're sitting there raking their leaves and trimming their shrubs, is the guy that's living in the half a million dollar house, does he do that for a living? I don't think so. Or he wouldn't be living in a half a million dollar house. So everything that I'm saying, I'm going to wrap this video up, it all comes down to the definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over and expect a different result. You really think about that the definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over and expect a different result you're not going to get a different result right if you're washing dishes for a living 
and you're sitting there having a nervous breakdown saying, how come I'm not making $50 an hour? How come I don't live in a nice house? I'm washing the dishes really hard. I'm going to work extra hard. I'm going to work 90 hours a week. I'm going to work Saturdays and Sundays washing dishes. And that'll get me my big house, my mansion, and put my kids through college and give me the best health insurance and a Roth IRA. No, it won't. It'll never happen. You will die a broke dishwasher. You will die a broke dishwasher. It's very clear. It's very obvious. But because of our need for short-term money to pay our bills, and we're terrified of suffocating because we're running like on the treadmill... <laughs> We're, we're afraid of suffocating to death. This is tied to our central nervous system. It's tied to the amygdala, the fight or flight response. It keeps us in the alligator pit. This is all like, it's just, it's just basic primate shit. Okay, I'm done with this crazy ass video and I'm going back to bed. But there's some truths that will start to come out. They float up to the surface after being in this business for a few years, in just my opinion. And you start to see them and it's like, Truth, red flag, truth, up your game and start doing big shit, or get the fuck out. <laughs> and you're like, nope, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. <laughs> Alright, peace. <laughs>